This Pentecost Sunday, may God's Spirit fill the sanctuary and overflow our lives. Please join me in the call to worship. How manifold are the works of God. In the works of God and made all of them. The earth is full of God's creatures. They look to God to feed them in due season. God will pour out the Spirit in all his and all his daughters and sons. We shall see visions and dream dreamers. Please join in our first hymn 249, the Spirit of God descend upon my heart. together 
and uh, Ben and Nori Bins are going to host their first meeting sometime in August. And at that meeting, they are going to plan uh, youth events for youth seventh grade through, through high school. And uh, they're, they're hoping to have one event a, a month and, and get quite a few couples involved. And uh, each couple can host a, an event or if anyone else in the congregation who would be interested in hosting a, a youth event could attend that meeting. And so that will be coming up. And, and uh, we are excited because we've got a great children's ministry going. Uh, nursery school through, through uh, sixth grade. And now we want to increase that. We want to move that to seventh grade through the high school. And uh, so uh, we are uh, calling upon uh, our young couples to get that organized this summer. So more, uh, more info coming up on that later. Also, I am going to be teaching a communicants class this summer. It will be a six-week class for, for any students, seventh grade through high school who would like to join the church at the end of the summer. And uh, I will be uh, teaching that class kind of the basics uh, of our faith over that six-week period. And then they will join there at the end of August along with anyone else who likes to join the church at that point in time. Cheryl, do you want to talk about your nursery? Sure. Okay. Um, I'm looking for some of my um, parents of the younger kids. Um, that would be willing to go down to uh, the nursery during the summer and kind of oversee those kids ages like two to through kindergarten. The older kids, you can't come, but um, it just gets to be too much down there. But there are busy bags out in the narthex that when you come in, there's plenty of things to keep you occupied in there. But if you're interested in maybe doing it maybe once a month or something like that, uh, just let me know. There's Play-Doh down there, there's coloring books down there, of course there's lots of toys. And so um, I'm, I'm hoping that maybe some of the, the uh, mothers or dads even would be willing to take uh, a, the group if we have a lot. We don't have too many kids here today, but uh, down and uh, and what during the worship service that we used. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Cheryl. Any other announcements this morning? If not, we're going to invite Bill Nagel forward to uh, present for us a reading for Memorial Day. Family members, I thank you 
been a pleasure to serve our country, and they will always be remembered for me. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Almighty God, we ask that your divine blessing be with the children, family, and staff of our national home for children in Eaton Park, Rapid, Michigan. May your spirit dwell with them forever, giving them the health and guidance in their lives. Help us always to be faithful to our fallen comrades, to providing shelter and guidance, support for their families. We ask this in their holy name. Amen.
got some kids here today. I don't know if they're children's room.
Knowing that we are flawed human beings living in a fallen world, we come humbly before our holy God. It is by God's grace through the Son that we can be restored and renewed. Please join me in the prayer of confession. We confess to you, O God, before one another that we have sinned. We are happy and quick to be your people who are filled with your spirit, and yet we are reluctant to use the power of your spirit to make the world into the realm you desire to become. We hesitate to speak out against injustice. We are slow to speak words of care and love, and we allow the world to go on its way to destruction without giving even a thought. Forgive us all. Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Hey, let's take a minute to, to pass the peace of Christ to one another and uh, say hi to each other.
All right, Cheryl. Okay, I have an update on Adam's baby Jack. They got home finally, um, and he's he's pretty stable, but they still are needing a lot of grips. What's his? Jack. 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 Yeah. Uh, we just want to wish Danielle uh, best of luck <coughs> as they move to Alaska, right? Alaska? Yeah. Yes. North to Alaska. We're going to miss Danielle. <coughs> Do you know when you're moving, Danielle? Next Sunday. Next Sunday. Uh, what a great addition uh, Danielle and her family has been to this church and their uh, attendance and her, and her service here. Let's give Danielle a round of applause. Let's come before the Lord and seek him in prayer. Lord, we uh, thank you uh, for this opportunity to gather together on, on this day as, as we remember uh, all the, the soldiers who laid down their lives for this country and our freedoms because of that. We give you thanks for that. We, we are reminded that, uh, that you, O oh Lord Jesus, laid down your life for us and said the example of sacrifice. So help us, uh, Lord, to uh, see their examples and your example and live sacrificially uh, to uh, help others in, in our lives, people around us. We pray that we would take that lesson to heart. But we also thank you that we are gathered here to uh, celebrate Pentecost and the power of your spirit uh, entering believers and the birth uh, of the church. So we pray that uh, we would uh, celebrate together by opening our hearts fully to, to your presence and your power in our lives. And Lord, also uh, we have this opportunity to uh, lift these people up in, in, in prayer. We thank you for the praise reports. Uh, Danielle's dad is uh, doing much better. Uh, also, uh, we, we thank you that uh, you are moving and touching the the lives of others. Terry V was uh, home from the hospital. We thank you for that answered prayer. Uh, we do want to lift up a couple of families to you this morning, Lord. We can think of uh, my wife's family, and the loss of, of her sister. Be with them and, and bless the memorial service tomorrow. Comfort hearts. Uh, the Tom Smith family, Lord, we lift them up to you and, and pray that uh, you would comfort their hearts. Uh, we think of these other uh, names that were added today. Young Maggie, we pray for her right now, this brain issue that she has. We pray for her healing and her presence. Watch over her. We pray for her young Jack. We pray for healing and health. And surround uh, that family with your presence and power and light and love. Uh, Lord, we uh, continue to pray for all these people who are battling cancer. So many. We think of Marjorie and Jessica, Sammy and Dan. Sandra and Kim, Dina and Philip, 
May their treatments be effective. Tom and Susie, Denny and Sally, Ruth and Kathy, we pray, Lord, that they are on meds, that uh, those meds will help them through. Gail and Ron and John and Tom, Jack and Marlene, young Leo and Karen. Lord, it's such a tough battle. So many people are going through it. So we pray, Lord, for your, your touch upon each and every one of their lives. Lord, we continue to pray for others who are having health problems. We think of Sophia and Colton battling diabetes. Watch over their lives. Be with uh, Donna and Nancy. Uh, young Luca who has heart problems. Our friend Shirley Benline and her health. Uh, watch over uh, Randy and his health. Continue to be with Sue and Bill. We think of Bill Bolden. Continue to pray for him. Patrick's dad who lived up to you. We think of Dana. Taylor and God's calling upon his life. Continue to pray for Jack and his heart. Watch over Dorothy and Celeste. Be with Bill and our friend Jane. Continue to be with Bruce and my brother-in-law, Drake, Jim Drake and his foot problems. Continue to be with Ron and Shana. Bill and Patty. Daisy, who's having health problems. Jim and young Hazel. Ron's battling COPD. Harrison just recently went through a, a surgery. Watch over him. Continue to be with uh, Lisa. We think of uh, Sue Schnee and, and pray for her hip. Continue to be with uh, Jason, that having liver problems. Doris Morrison down there at East Ohio Regional Hospital. Continue to watch over her. Be with Gunner and Garrett. We think of John and uh, Debbie. Recently had brain aneurysm. Be with Chuck battling migraines and Carol. Watch over uh, Vicky. Continue to be with uh, Bill and his health. Watch over uh, Martin. And we pray for these unspoken requests, Lord, from uh, Debbie and Jane, Cheryl and, and Patrick. Watch over each and every one of them. So, Lord, we thank you that you hear our prayers and uh, that to your hand. Of healing is upon these people. We thank you that you are comforting those who are going through a, a valley right now. Uh, be with this church as we move into the summer. Help us to continue to, to see uh, the vision that uh, you have for us and then take the steps to fulfill that vision. Uh, move in the lives of, of uh, these uh, young kids and, and, and young couples with kids. Continue to watch over each and every one of them. Lord, we pray for our military people around the world and that you would uh, bring them home safely to their families when their tour of duty is done. And we pray for those around the world who are trying to bring the peace of Christ into the world, especially in those areas where, where uh, you claim to be a believer. Uh, your life can be threatened. Now we pray together the prayer that the Son of God taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This time let us honor the Lord with the giving of our tithes, our gifts, and our offerings.
thank you and we do praise you that you give us the opportunity to give to the, the work of your kingdom. I, I pray that uh, your blessings would pour out upon uh, us as we try to, to move forward your kingdom in this world because we know that our lives can, can be a, a channels of your blessings to others. So we pray that we would be wise stewards, take, taking the gifts that you give us, the talents, the abilities, the material things you give us and using them effectively in this world. We thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Seated. Scripture reading for today comes from the uh, book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. This ends our scripture reading. Our New Testament reading this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 7, verses 37 through 39. Hear the word of God. On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as Scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time the Spirit had not been given since Jesus had not yet been glorified. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word, and, and uh, we pray that you would open up our hearts and our minds to the understanding of your word, uh, who your spirit is, what your, your spirit is all about, and how your spirit can empower our, our lives. We want to become more receptive, uh, more sensitive, Lord, to your spirit so that we can be effective servants in this world, bringing the light and love and life of your spirit to the people around us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Throughout uh, the history uh, of the Israelites, there have been three major festivals that have been celebrated down through the centuries in Israel and in Jerusalem. And those three festivals are... The Festival of Tabernacles, uh, the Festival of Passover, and the Festival uh, of Pentecost. Now, what were these three festivals all about? Well, the Festival of Tabernacles was uh, honoring God for all of his provisions, for the harvest, for food that God provided. They remember the Israelites traveling through the wilderness and how God provided them the manna and the water for them to, to make it through that journey. Of course, the Passover festival was a festival that remembered Israel's deliverance from slavery in Egypt. And if you remember that story uh, from the Bible, from Exodus, uh, the angel of the Lord passed over the houses of the Israelites who put the blood of the Lamb on their doorpost. Uh, the blood of the Lamb was the sign that they were believers in God, and, and the angel of death passed over their houses. The festival of, of, of Pentecost is a festival that remembers the giving of God's law, the Ten Commandments, the law of God to the Israelites to help them to become the people God that wanted them uh, to be. So those were the three main festivals that were celebrated throughout Israelites here, there in Jerusalem, and in Israel. 
Jesus and his disciples attended these festivals. They went to Jerusalem and traveled there to celebrate these uh, festivals. Uh, on one occasion, on the last day of the festival uh, of Tabernacle, uh, we, we get these words. John 7, 37, 38, on the last day and the greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as Scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from them. Now the disciples there at the festival heard him say these words, but they really did not quite understand what he was talking about. Jesus was actually referring to a turning point that was coming in history. And that <laughs> turning point in history was coming soon, but, but their eyes uh, were not opened to what he was saying at that moment. They did not understand until it actually happened. Now the very next verse says this. By this, he meant the Spirit whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the Spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. And so what happened was the day of Pentecost came, the Spirit was given, the church was born, and the disciples said, Oh, looking back, they had 20-20 vision. Now we remember what he said there at the Festival of Tabernacles, that this day would come. And, and that we would have rivers of living water flowing through us. Aha! Now, now we understand what Jesus was talking about. And of course what Jesus was talking about was a turning point in world history. The birth of the church is what he was talking about. And there have been several turning points in world history. And this was definitely one of them, when the world was changed. Now, what is a turning point? I looked it up in the dictionary. A turning point is as a time at which a decisive change in a situation occurs, especially one with beneficial results. Now all of us at one time or another have experienced a turning point in, in our lives. It can be as simple as a setting a goal and, and achieving a, a goal and, and a setting and achieving that goal could become a turning point in, in your lives. I, I think when I was a kid, when, when I was a kid in high school, uh, they did not give out trophies to everybody on the team back then. And uh, so I remember being on the cross country team and, and uh, we would go to a meet and the top 10 runners in the meet would all win a trophy. And I remember as a sophomore, as a junior thinking, boy, I, I'd really like to win a trophy one of these days. That would be great if I could be one of those top 10 runners. And I remember Coach Downey said to the team before my senior year, he said, you, you guys need to set goals. You, you need to each set a goal for this coming season. And so for my senior season, I set that goal. Man, I'm going to be in, in a trophy dinner in these meets that are coming up. And, and then I'm going to make it to the state meet. Those are my goals. But then Coach Downey hit us with something else. He said, okay, it's nice that you have goals, but now you need a, a plan and the determination to stick to that plan and work hard so that you can achieve those goals. Well, that was the hard part. So I had to come up with a plan, and uh, he helped us, of course. And my plan was to run 10 miles a day all summer long. And so the summer before my senior year, I did that. I ran 10 miles a day all summer long, put in nine, uh, 900 miles that summer. Lo and behold, uh, came into that season in really good shape and I, and I accomplished those goals. And that was a turning point in my life as a, as a young guy. It, I, I learned that if you, if you set a goal and, and then work incredibly hard and follow that plan and, and make it through, it can lead you to success. And I took, I took that lesson in life and I applied it to other parts of, of my life and, and it changed my life's journey. So that was one turning point. We all go through turning points. When you get, when you fall in love, you get married, it's a turning point in life because you're, you're no longer by yourself. Now you have a mate. And now you are collaborating together on the path 
pathway and the direction that you're going to go in life. And so life turns and goes in, in a new direction. When you finally get that job that, that aligns with what you want to do in life, that aligns with your career, that's a, that's a turning point. I remember when Hearts Ferry Schools hired me many years ago. It, it began a, a, a new pathway, a new direction of uh, coaching and, and teaching for all those years. It, it was no longer a job at, at uh, LB's cooking food or cutting grass for, for the uh, rec department, but now I was on my career. And then a few years later, churches started calling me to substitute preach. I remember I substitute preached here many times back then. And a little church up on top of a hill called Scotch Ridge called me. And I went up there to substitute preach, and, and the uh, elders of that church said, Joe, why don't you consider taking commissioned lay preacher classes, becoming a commissioned lay preacher, and uh, becoming our, our pastor? I thought, well, you know what, I'll think about that. I'll pray. And that was a, a turning point in my life. I started taking those classes and, and was commissioned, and I've been on that path, and, and it led me to this pole. So there are all kinds of uh, turning points that we go through in life. Well, the, the turning point that Jesus was talking about there at that festival uh, of uh, tabernacles was the birth of the church. And uh, he's, he was saying that there was going to, to come a, a day that God is going to pour out His Spirit upon believers and those believers are, are going to be empowered. That, that Spirit is going to fill them like living waters. And the disciples were trying to figure out you know, what in the world is he, he talking about. And I'm going to read that verse again. By this he met the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that point in time, the Spirit had not been given since Jesus had not yet been glorified. And so the disciples began to understand that there was going to come a day that when believers who were receptive and sensitive to God and expecting that God was going to place the Holy Spirit into their lives would be ready. That Spirit would be poured out and there would be a great change, a turning point in this world. And I thought about that. And uh, I, I, it made me wonder. Uh, it, <laughs> this might sound odd to you. But it made me wonder about George Lucas, who was the writer and director of the Star Wars movies. Has anybody seen the Star Wars movies? Oh, Patrick, come on, I know you've seen the Star Wars movies. You know, when I, when I thought about that, was George Lucas influenced by Christian theology when he came up with this idea of the Force? Think about that. The, the force was the spiritual force that, that the, the Jedi warriors or the Jedi knights, whatever they were uh, called, whatever they were called back then, and if they would become sensitive and receptive to this spiritual force, this force would, would fill them and empower them to battle against the forces of evil. And I thought, wow, he had to have been influenced by Christian theology to come up with that idea because that's exactly what the Holy Spirit does for us. Now, I know that uh, George Lucas, uh, his, his idea that there was a good side and a dark side, and, and uh, you can be drawn over to the dark side. Well, in Christian theology, the Holy Spirit is all good, and he, he, the Spirit empowers us to do good, to make a positive difference in the world. We believe there are evil forces in the world, uh, but uh, that dark side has nothing to do the Holy Spirit, but it, as I thought about that, it, it occurred to me, you know, that's exactly what influenced George Lewis when he came up with that idea. Now, as we revisit that day when the Spirit came down with power, this is what this is what we read about. It's interesting. Acts 2, 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost came, 